Yeah, what's up guys? Here's Andrew and here's another demonstration video. This video is basically a follow-up to the last video where I kind of showed how you can take some of the, the what's it called, the AXI display port and the VDMA from the digital and base design and then have that communicate through a user application running on over a Linux kernel on the, on the Zinc chip. Here, I basically extended that and now I'm using uh, OpenCV. So in this demonstration, uh, I'm just gonna run a new example program. This, this example program is kind of, it's like somewhat based on one of the examples that OpenCV uh, has on their website, except, I mean, it's a lot. Of, there's a lot of modifications you have to do to uh, get it to work. Well, maybe not a lot, but you can't just run their example straight. So, as you can see here, it, it just loaded a bunch of images that I have uh, shared over a mounted uh, folder that's on my host computer here. But using uh, NFS, I can access those files on the, the Linux uh, run it, on Linux running on the Xyble board. Like this terminal here is actually connected to the Xyble board, and on the screen here, I, this VGA display is connected to the Xyble board too. So all it does is it lets me cycle through a bunch of images that I have uh, loaded onto that shared uh, folder. So that's basically it. Uh, you might not notice this, but the the resolution, no, not the resolution, the size of the images is a little, it's actually a little off, just because uh, the screen that I have is completely square, however the resolution, well the one resolution that I got to work is not square, so it's not, the, the aspect ratio is in like one to one, but it works, and the hardest part about this project Unsurprisingly, it was just getting the libraries to link properly. I don't know what it is, but whenever I use OpenCV, I always have the most trouble just getting all the right static libraries to link. And for whatever reason, and I feel like I should have noticed this much earlier, but the order in which you link the libraries does matter. And I just noticed that. I ran into so many issues where I had the right libraries linked, but I would still get a lot of undefined references to libraries, well, to, to like methods that I know should be included because I have all the right libraries. So I spent way too much time doing that, but the actual application isn't too bad. Uh, I think the, the trickiest part is making sure that uh, when you're creating uh, the frame that you, that you link to, the, to the, the physical frame buffer, like right now I have it set up such that the, the VDMA reads from uh, memory outside of the memory space of the kernel. and uh, essentially, the, the correct type for that, the correct uh, OpenCV type, matrix type, is a uh, it's a um, you know eight bit unsigned characters but four channels. And the last channel is just left zero. It's not being used. So, if you load an image, you have to make sure you mix in a fourth channel, and then you can copy that image to the to the the mat to the the OpenCV mat file. That's uh that's pointing to the the, the, the frame buffer is outside the memory of the kernel. But it works and I'm hoping to do something a bit more interesting in the next project. Uh, I, I got these, uh, I think they're called uh, TTL JPEG cameras. I got these actually probably a few, either a few months or last year. It's been a long time since I got them. But I never did anything with them. Um, I'm gonna try to use them for the next project. Basically, uh, I think they give you like 840 by 640. I forgot the exact resolution, but it basically they give you frames. Uh, they give you images like I think 30 times a second, 30 frames per second. But what they, what it actually gives you are JPEG images. So the main one of the reasons why I got OpenCV to work is that you, know, you can use that to decode uh, JPEG images, which is basically what I'm doing now. Like these images here, all these images. Well, I think the the stereotypical image processing lady image. This is a JPEG, and these last two are uh, PNGs. So, but that should be very useful when using this. So, basically, for the next project, I should have a, a live stream type video, and uh, hopefully, it runs fast enough to at least give me like 30, 30 frames per second. But uh, that basically concludes it for this video. Thanks for those who took the time to watch this. Take it easy.